Let's turn today to Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, and verse 22. And Jesus said to his disciples, For this reason I say to you, do not be anxious for your life as to what you shall eat, nor for your body as to what you shall put on. For life is more than food, and the body than clothing. What was this particular reason he had just spoken a parable about a rich man in verses 16 to 21 explaining how a man who was occupied only with this world and wasn't rich towards God was a fool because he didn't give God the first place in his life and what did he gain by all that he had accumulated when his soul was going to be taken away that night and he said to his disciples for this reason since your soul is more important than your body don't be anxious for your life if God cares for your soul so much that he sent Jesus to die for our sins so that we can be saved for all eternity you can be absolutely certain that he will also care for our body to preserve it in life so that we can glorify him. It's a question of priorities. Don't be occupied with food for life is more than food. As to what you're going to eat, that's not important. Isn't it enough that God preserves us in life? When food becomes more important to us than living we've got our priorities wrong when we live to eat instead of eating to live we've got things upside down and we cannot be disciples of Jesus those who are fastidious in their food habits cannot be disciples of Jesus no Life is more than food, and it's enough if God gives us any type of food that can keep us alive. In the same way, the other thing that bothers so many people is clothing. He says, don't be anxious about your body as to what you shall put on. Those who are fastidious about clothing, fancy clothes, fashionable clothes, cannot be disciples of Jesus if these are the things that interest them. Being occupied with tasty foods and fashionable clothes are for those who want to live for this world. Those who follow Jesus have no time to be taken up with these things because they know that life is more important than food and the body. If God keeps the body in health, what does it matter whether it's clothed in fancy clothes or ordinary clothes? God will give us enough clothes to put on and he'll give us enough food to eat. He doesn't want us to die of starvation. And he doesn't want us to go around naked. He'll give us clothes. They may not be the fancy types that are the latest fashion. And they may not be all that rich, tasty food that gives people a lot of sicknesses in any case. It's food that will keep us healthy. And then Jesus said, Consider the ravens. Verse 24. For they neither sow nor reap. No bird sows or reaps. Doesn't have any property to sow and reap in any case. And they have no storeroom nor barn. Yet God feeds them. How much more valuable you are than the birds. And which of you by being anxious can add a single cubit to his lifespan? Now what Jesus was saying here was not that we shouldn't have any forethought for the future. Or that we shouldn't have any savings at all. We read that Jesus and his disciples also had some savings. And that's why Judas Iscariot was the treasurer. He had a bag. And the bag meant savings. It's the equivalent of a bank account. Judas Iscariot operated it. And they didn't spend everything they got the same day. They saved some of it for the next day. Which means they had savings. Obviously Jesus wasn't against that. But he certainly was against anxiety. He certainly was against savings that are stored up 
because of anxiety. There's a lot of difference between anxiety and careful forethought. And here we read that it's anxiety that the Lord wanted to deliver his disciples from. And in that connection, he said, look at the birds. They're not anxious. But they've got forethought. They gather twigs and make a nest when they want to lay eggs. They plan for their little ones. But they're not anxious. And then he continues on the theme of anxiety in verse 25. There's one other thing about the birds, and that is, they don't wait lazily in their nests for God to drop food into their mouths. So the Lord didn't mean here that faith in God means that we just do nothing. We've got to work. We've got to look for work. Look for a job. Apply for a job. Just like the birds go out every day looking for food. God doesn't drop food into the mouth of any bird lying lazily in its nest. They go look, looking for it and they get it. That's what the Lord was teaching. Hard work, but faith that God will provide our need. And then he went on to speak about anxiety, saying, Which of you, by being anxious, can add a single cubit to his lifespan or to his height? A cubit is the distance from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger, or about 18 inches. And Jesus said, How many of you can by working yourself up in anxiety, increase your height by one and a half feet. And if you can't even do that, what Jesus called a very little thing, verse 26. To increase your height by one and a half feet is a very little thing in God's eyes. He's doing that in children all the time as they grow up. It's a very little thing for God. He says, you can't do it by any amount of anxiety. Why are you anxious about other matters? Why are you anxious if you can't do even a very little thing? No, trust God. The emphasis of Jesus' teaching was, trust God. And then he said, consider the lilies, how they grow. The flowers of the field. They don't toil. They don't spin. But look how they are clothed. I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory did not clothe himself like one of these. Why did Jesus speak about this. Why does God give such beautiful colors to the flowers? Why didn't he just paint it all black and white? Such beautiful colors shows God's care for his creation. That's what Jesus was pointing out here. And he says, God cares to clothe these flowers. How much more he will clothe you? Why don't you trust God and leave it to him? To clothe you. Even Solomon in all his glory. Couldn't be clothed like that. And yet. This grass of the field is alive one day. And cut down and thrown to the furnace the next day. And God clothes it for that 24 hour period. Even though it's in existence only for 24 hours. God clothes it. With a beautiful color. How much more. He will clothe you. O you of little faith. Believers are very often men and women of little faith when it comes to these earthly matters. And Jesus spoke so much about trusting God in these simple earthly matters like food, clothing, shelter for ourselves and for our children. If we are satisfied with little, God will take care of our need. It's when we covet and desire beyond what is necessary for us that we run into problems. And so he said, don't keep on seeking, verse 29, what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink and don't keep worrying. What a tremendous word. Don't keep worrying about earthly things. For all these things, the nations of the world eagerly seek. In fact, that's the thing that distinguishes a worldly person from a true spiritual man of, or woman of God. The worldly person is eagerly seeking after some new clothes, fancy food. These are the things he pursues after. He's worried about it. 
worried what other people will think about the way he's dressed. Satisfying his own tastes all the time with fancy foods. He said, these are the things the nations of the world eagerly seek. But your father knows that you need these things. There is a great need for believers to be freed from slavery to fancy foods and fancy clothes. Very few believers have fought the battle and overcome in these two areas. Do you believe that your father knows what you need and that he'll provide what you need in these areas? If you believe that, then Jesus said, seek his kingdom and these things will be added to you. In other words, put God's kingdom first. Let your primary concern be how the church can be built. How God's word can spread in your country, in your town, in your office, in your neighborhood, to your relatives. That your mind is always revolving around how God's word can spread. And you're seeking that. First of all, in your own life. For the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That you're seeking the spread of righteousness, peace and joy in your own life. Seek that. And all these other things will be added to you. All that is necessary for your life. Our life must be a testimony to the fact that we never sought after earthly things, that all the earthly things we do have came falling into our lap as we spent our life pursuing after the kingdom of God. Yes, that should be our testimony, that everything earthly came to us as we pursued after the kingdom of God.